Light is the key to any painting. Take these breakfast things, ordinary in themselves, but backlit from the window with their reflections in the table, they become an interesting subject to paint. Again, I'm going to do a rough drawing just to find the position of these things in my composition. The nice thing about using just the turpentine on the brush is that you're staining the paper, but you're not really putting any colour on. So if you change your mind about the position of things, you can do it quite easily without having got any muddy paint on the picture itself. Looking at shapes, and there's shapes in between, so we've got this little triangle of light here between the saucer, the shadow, and the side of the coffee pot. Remember that the items themselves are not the only important shapes. The shapes between them are equally important on this flat surface of the picture. When you're trying to look at tone, half close your eyes on and off all the time. That way you get rid of local colour and you just see the contrast of tone. You can paint any subject with any media. But the reason I wanted to use oils for this one is because it's a very strong contrast of light and dark. And you can much more easily lay rich darks in with oils because of their opacity than you can with the transparency of watercolours. You need an awful lot of dark pigment to make those same darks. I also like painting on the back of, of sketchbook boards because of this mid-tone, which means you only have to bring in the main lights and darks to build your composition, to build the tones of your composition. When you look at any painting, decide for you what's the main feature of that painting. What is the main reason it attracted you? In this case, it is this backlight and these rims of light that are small areas of light in comparison to the large areas of darkness. So it's that balance of the light and dark that has created the interest in the painting and becomes the composition. OK, now we can carry on the drawing with our tones, but we're painting as we draw. So first of all, I'm going to bring in those lovely light lights because they're my chief interest. Pure titanium white on the tip of an old sable brush that's long been given up for watercolour. Come round that rim, thicker at the edges of the ellipse. Very thin, thin, thin light there. Oh, so beautiful. The light just catching it and breaking in different places. A beautiful chunk of light. Oh, look at that chunk of light in there. And a lovely swathe of light underneath the cup itself. So you would never look at your breakfast things as carefully as this if you weren't painting them. I think that one of the greatest things about painting is that it makes you see, it makes you look, and then you see. And you'll never clear your breakfast things away again. <laughs> and then the light carries on across the top of the croissant. Remember, you're not thinking croissant, saucer, cup, coffee pot. You're thinking light, dark, light, dark. These things are represented by the pattern of shapes and colours that you put onto this piece of board. Lovely, lovely patch of shimmering light coming across here. And again, there's a nice chunk of, very nice, a thin little chunk of light across here. So the, the subject of this painting is actually nothing to do with breakfast things, but it's to do with the light, the backlight coming in and around some items on a table, casting shadows, casting reflections. That's the main light thing. Every other light is not as bright as those. So now we can go for the main darks. And I'm going to use some burnt umber with ultramarine blue. Right, start from the centre. Look at that lovely dark right under there. And when you half close your eyes, the saucer itself melds into that dark. 
and then it swings round this, pot, round this plate and then comes in underneath this as well. I'm going to touch a bit of burnt sienna into that dark just to heat it up a bit. It's nice to be using burnt sienna in oil after using it in the watercolour for the boots because you can just feel the difference in the two media. Here we have the same colour, in essence, but one using it in a more opaque fashion and the other using it transparently. And what a different tone, in a sense, it becomes, as well as colour. When you are looking at tones and you are ceasing to see items in their self, the, this glass part containing the coffee also joins with this part of the holder of the coffee pot and then comes down into its reflection and carries on through so that's that is all one shape on the picture comes through and then we've all got a lovely reflection of the handle all i'm looking at is the darks i've got the dark of the other side of the chrome container cafetiere i suppose i should say shouldn't i so again, you know, you are the boss. You are making the painting. After that's cleared away, there's only the painting left and no one's going to compare it. Remember that. The painting must live alone. Do not sacrifice your painting to the veracity of the thing in front of you to the point where you, your painting suffers. All I'm doing is my eye is just going back and forth over the, over the group of objects, over the spaces between them, above them, below them and just finding areas of dark that I can use this colour that's on my brush for. So I'm always going over the whole composition. I'm not painting the cup, then painting the coffee pot. I'm painting the whole flat surface all at once. Nor do you have to show every single different reflection, every single different nuance of tone. You only need the main ones. Anybody looking at it will do the rest with their eyes. You only have to suggest and then look at all this at the dark back here. This is all dark. We've got a red cushion there, but it's still dark. So I'm going to thin the paint down. The lovely little lip of the cafetiere. Using your brush to draw round. You are drawing the shape of the cafetiere with the background. Remember, you're working on a two-dimensional surface that is only a collection of patterns and shapes, lines and colours. The reflection of the cup in the table is not quite as dark as the reflection of the saucer and the plate as more ambient light has come around it. So that, I'm just going to use that slightly thinner for the minute and look, my favourite thing I think of all is this handle. Make sure your reflection comes down below the item. I just love that. Oh, I just love it. And then half close your eyes on this cup. Hmm, it's an interesting colour that. I think we'll just get the tone in first of all. Make sure it's dark beforehand. Again, I'm using thin wash here because I'm not quite certain what colour I'm going to do that yet. I just want to get the tone in before anything else. If the tones work in a painting, the chances are the painting will work. Tones are far more important to the finish result than the colour is. Ultramarine blue with that ochre. Sort of green, it's almost a, oh, yes, it's sort of a greeny, darky colour. Now when I half close my eyes, I can barely see the details on it. Just a slight lightening where the cup is unpatterned. There's a little touch of light creeping round there, so I'll leave that just... Now I'm going to go for the lights that aren't the strongest lights. And the sun's coming out on this thing. Can you believe it? Didn't even know the sun came round this far into this room. <laughs> There's quite a yellow, a yellowness to the light. Yellow oak is still a bit warm. I want to cool it down a bit. I'm going to put some cadmium yellow with it.
how I can thicken up this background. Just a nice rich colour. When you're painting the croissant, even though it's got more colour than any of the other items, you've still got to think it's colour in tone. So even though I'm using this rich Mars brown, it's still got to be the right tone before it can be the right colour. Where really these lovely little bits of croissant catch the light, the sort of fluffy edges, quite light, quite yellowish. I think one of the things that puts people off painting oils in the home is that they think it's messy. But it, it needn't be messy if you don't work too big and you put plastic and things around like I've done. You're not going to damage anything. Because you're painting on a coloured ground, whatever colour you mix on the palette won't be quite the same as the colour you put down because you're mixing on a white palette. There's a whisk of light coming under here, just creeping around. It's still dark, but it's just whisking in. blue plate, the blue and green plate, is lit slightly in this area, but it's not a strong light. One of the nicest things about oil paint is that once you've got the paint on there, you can actually move it around in situ. So you can use darks from one part to darken areas and lights from one part to light another area. So you don't have to make sort of ultimate decisions really until the very end. It's a, a very forgiving medium. And just let me touch in that little highlight there. Bold contrast of light and dark make very good subject matter for a painting. Any arrangement of these items would probably have worked because of their differing heights, but I chose this view for the diagonal of the table and the diagonal across the top of the items. Those two lines give strength to the composition. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.